Well, hey, Lifehouse Church, I am so excited to be able to share God's word with you today. My name's Richard from Lifehouse in Hong Kong, and I believe God is going to encourage you and lift your hearts right now. So why don't we take a moment just to pray, and then we're going to get into God's word. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives right now. Holy Spirit, we know that you're moving and I pray that you would touch hearts, that you would encourage every single person who's listening, whether it's their first time uh, hearing the good news of Jesus or whether this is something that they've been leaning into for a while. God, I pray that you bless every single person in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to share with you around the subject of what to do if you're tired, what to do when you're feeling a bit exhausted. Because, hey, I don't know about you, but I hear sometimes uh, this year that people are talking about COVID fatigue and uh, maybe feeling a bit exhausted from uh, this totally new way of living and all the decisions that we need to make, that we need to make at maybe having kids at home when they should be at school and uh, lots of changes with work and school life. But I believe that God doesn't want you to live your life tired and that today, hey, it's actually easy to come into the presence of God and He can recharge you. So we're going to jump into God's Word. Uh, I'd love to share a scripture with you before I get into our main Bible story. Hey, Jeremiah 29, 11, the verse that we know and love here at Lifehouse, it says, Hey, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. And hey, we know that God has an amazing plan for every single person. That's right. Hey, even if you're hearing this for the first time, Jesus has a plan for you. I'm encouraged that God has a plan. Yes, even for me. Uh, but sometimes I've also seen in life that sometimes God's plan uh, seems to be going differently than my plan. Sometimes there's a bit of a gap between what I expect and actually the reality of my my situation. I don't know, maybe you've found yourself in that kind of uh, a situation over the last year or this whole season throughout COVID. Maybe there were some things that you expected would happen, but the reality right now is so different. And I really feel like sometimes when we see that gap between expectation and reality, sometimes uh, it can be a little bit exhausting or it can be tiring in some ways. And I want to look at the life of Elijah, an incredible Bible hero, uh, someone that we all look up to in the Bible. And I want to look at how he really bounced back, how he responded from a moment of tiredness. You see, in this story, Elijah was coming off the back of an incredible victory. He had just had this uh, miraculous event. Uh, God had shown himself. Uh, if you know the story, uh, there was this uh, a miracle uh, fireball from the sky and, and, and Elijah won over his, over his enemies. I mean, it was an incredible victory for the Lord. He prayed that it would rain. It rained after three years of no rain. Rain. I mean, it was an absolute highlight of Elijah's life. And so he was going from up here like, this is the best, you know, like everything was working out. But then suddenly an evil queen, she said, Elijah, by the end of the day, I'm going to kill you. And Elijah suddenly uh, went from here down to here because this was no just mere threat. This was literally life and death. And so we see in 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, verse 3 to 8, it says, Elijah was afraid and he fled for his life. He went to Bathsheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there And I can imagine Elijah just literally running for his life. You know, I've never been uh, in a situation where I've had to run for my life. Praise God. Uh, but uh, I know Pastor Rod has a few of those crazy stories and uh, I'm sure you'll hear some of them if you haven't already. But hey, Elijah just would have been terrified. I mean, suddenly he's running for his life. And we know actually uh, from this scripture that this town, Bathsheba, was a long way away. 
It was over a hundred kilometers away and he's running, you know, probably just, just as, as going as fast as he could, just trying to escape from this evil queen. And, and uh, he gets to this town, it's, it's in Ju- Judah, and he leaves behind his servant and he goes even further uh, into the wilderness, it says in verse four, he went on alone uh, into the wilderness, traveling all day. So I want you to picture Elijah terrified, scared for his life, and just running by himself into nothingness, trying to hide. And he gets down uh, into this place and just exhausted, he falls to the ground. And it says, he sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. (laughs) This is heavy stuff. This is a low moment. This is Elijah exhausted. I mean, I've never prayed a prayer, uh, God, you know, take my life. But that's exactly what Elijah says next. He says, I've had enough, Lord. He said, take my life for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. And here we see the severity of Elijah's situation and just how much of an emotional toll it was taking on him at the time. I mean, he's literally asking God to take his life. And I think this should be an encouragement to so many people out there. If you've ever struggled with thoughts of suicide, if you've ever struggled with negative thinking or just bad thoughts of any kind, hey, God can use you too. And it, this, this low point in Elijah's life was just a moment. God had great things ahead of him. In fact, we find at the end of the story that God uses him in the most amazing way multiple times. And I want to encourage you that Jesus hasn't finished with you yet and that Jesus can heal you from your depression. God can bring breakthrough and we can grow through this. So be encouraged. God still has an amazing plan for your life, just like Elijah. Elijah, even though you may feel at a difficult, at a particularly difficult moment right now, you see, he. I, I just believe that he was tired. Uh, he was emotionally tired. He thought that he was going to be killed. He was physically tired. He had just ran for over a hundred kilometers. Uh, you know, they didn't have cars back then. This was real rough travel. I mean, maybe it was a donkey, but even so, that's still crazy. Um, I think he was exhausted. And it was affecting his thinking. Um, when, I, when I pick up my phone, have you ever gone to do something important? You need to make a call. You need to text someone. And your phone has died. It's out of battery. And uh, it's, it's super frustrating. But uh, I've never once had one of those moments where I've picked up my phone. It's been dead. And I thought, what, you worthless phone, iPhone, and gone and thrown it in the bin. I've never done that. No one would throw away a perfectly good iPhone uh, just because it had ran out of battery. Uh, and, and, and I just want to say, just like you and me, hey, sometimes we can get tired. Sometimes we can get a little bit flat. Could be because of a situation in your family, could be a health issue, could be something that you're worried about, could be COVID and all of its consequences. But hey, just because you're feeling a bit flat, doesn't mean that God's finished with you. And it doesn't mean uh, that He doesn't have an incredible plan for you and, and, and He has a way out. It just means we need to learn how to recharge. In fact, you know, tiredness isn't weakness. And in the Bible, we actually even see that Jesus got tired. It says in John 4 verse 6 uh, uh, that Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat warily beside the well. In other words, it's okay to be exhausted sometimes, but I just believe that we don't have to stay exhausted, that God does want to help recharge us. And I believe He's going to do something supernaturally in your life today. It says in verse five, what happens next to Elijah? It says he lay down under that tree, right? But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. Now, I love this. This is the part that really stuck out to me is that Elijah is so tired and now he's sleeping, has a good little nap, getting physically recharged. And then the angel wakes up. The angel doesn't say, hey, you shouldn't have prayed that prayer. The angel doesn't judge him or get upset in any way. But the angel just says, get up and eat. 
Hey, I love that. Who doesn't love to get up and eat? In fact, I remember as a kid, uh, I don't know if you've ever had this, but uh, in Australia, we used to have breakfast in bed on special occasions. My mum would make me breakfast in bed on my birthday and they would, she would come in and, and lay a beautiful breakfast uh, on my bed and I got to eat that as I woke up. And that's a great way to wake up is to some good food. And Elijah gets woken up by the angel and that's all the angel says. And I'm sure if, if an angel was saying that and if an angel had prepared the food, I'm sure it tasted amazing. Um, It says here in verse 6, he looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones. I love hot bread and a jar of water. So he ate and he drank and he lay down again. And here we see that Elijah, not only is he eating till he's full, but then what do you do once you've had a great meal? You want to go to sleep again. So he lays down, verse 7, Then the angel of the Lord came back again, and he touched him, and he said, Get up and eat some more. So Elijah has a second breakfast. How good is that? So he's sleeping, eating, sleeping, eating. Come on, amazing food from this angel. Maybe angel cake. I don't know. That's a bad joke. Anyway, moving on. But something good. And he's getting physically recharged, right? He, he's starting to feel energy coming back. And uh, I, I, I love this. It says, it says, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. Because the angel knew that Elijah was being called to something big, that God was going to lead him to to something amazing, that that Israel needed Elijah fully recharged. And uh, I believe that, hey, instead of doubting the call of God on your life, instead of doubting that God could use you, maybe we just need to get recharged. Maybe the journey ahead is a big journey. But, but we just need to get full of the Holy Spirit. We just need to get full of vision and be, be encouraged to, to go on this journey. And in fact, in 1 Kings 19 verse 7, the same verse in the Amplified Version, the angel says to him, get up and eat for the journey is too long for you without adequate sustenance. In other words, just the fuel tank is empty. You can't go that distance if your fuel tank is empty. Um, And uh, so in verse uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 8, it says, He gets up, he ate and he drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. Elijah runs for 40 days and 40 nights. You see, this is what happens when our tank gets full again, when we get recharged and re-energized. That sleep eat, sleep, eat cycle of Elijah's woke him up for the next season, um, for the next miracle really uh, that that God had ahead of him. And I believe God wants to do the same for you and me today. So if you're feeling a bit tired right now, I just want to look at a couple of practical things that we can do uh, to go into our next season and to get out of that moment. So number one, I want to encourage you, don't quit, recharge. Don't quit, recharge. You see, the problem with Elijah was he was physically exhausted, yet he thought the problem was him. Or he thought the problem was maybe what God was calling him to, that it was too big, that he couldn't do it. And uh, he'd he'd misdiagnosed the problem completely. Uh, He was just tired. He was just physically exhausted. It was a physical problem. It wasn't a spiritual problem. It wasn't an identity problem. It was a physical problem. And sometimes when we misdiagnose diagnose problems, we can uh, make decisions that, that, that don't lead to, to real solutions. And uh, I know for me personally, sometimes I feel hungry. And uh, what, I, what I've realized is that it's not always uh, hunger that I'm feeling. Is that sometimes it's that I haven't drank enough water. I don't know if this is medically true. I'm not a doctor, but I heard that sometimes when you're thirsty, your body can actually give you symptoms of hunger. 
Um, and so even though if you eat more food, you'll still feel hungry again because it's, you're actually treating the wrong symptom. And just like that, I think sometimes, hey, during the last year, during the craziness of COVID and all the challenges and the tiredness and, and, and these moments, I, I've seen people making mistakes. I've seen people uh, deciding to disconnect from the things of God. Maybe that's dis- disconnecting from community. Maybe that's um, saying no to being part of a church or step, uh, stepping out of the plan of God. Or maybe that's uh, letting a dream go that God had put on their heart. Maybe even um, saying, uh, say, giving up on a marriage. Um, many things that ultimately uh, it, it, it was worth keeping. It was God, God was saying, no, hold on to this. But because of tiredness, um, they decided to quit. And I just don't want to be in that situation. And I'm sure you don't want to either. We need to understand that we are multidimensional people, that um, there are different things that make us up. In fact, John uh, 3 John 1 verse 2, our verse for the year that we love so much, is Paul is saying, dear friend, I pray that you may prosper in every way and be in good health physically, just as you are spiritually. And we also pray that you're in good health emotionally and intellectually and relationally. And, and just because one part of your life may be struggling right, right now or there may be challenges, doesn't mean you should give up on other areas in your life or make big decisions that you may end up regretting later. So. Do you know how to recharge? If you're feeling tired right now, do you know how to re-energize? I don't know if you've ever had one of those moments where, you know, you lay down uh, on your bed at night and you plug your phone uh, in and it's just so that when you wake up, you can uh, get a fully charged phone and then you have a good sleep and you wake up and you go to grab your phone and it's dead. You're like, what? I plug this thing in. And then you realize that your kids had pulled out the other end of the cable and you were plugged into nothing. See, sometimes we think that disconnecting can actually help us recharge. It's almost like, oh, if I just, uh, if I pull back from all my commitments, um, then I'm going to be able to rest. I'm, I'm going to be able to recharge. And and that may not necessarily be true. Yes, there are times to reevaluate our priorities. And if you need to take a break from something, that's fine. Jesus loves you. Come on, recharge and, and jump back in into what God would have for you. But I think also, um, sometimes we see disconnecting as a solution. And in fact, I've seen this around community in particular, in church life, being planted in a church. Hey, even during COVID, as we're in this online season, God's will for you is to be planted in His house, to be in a connect group. I wanna encourage you uh, as a new connect group semester is coming up, make sure that you're a part of community, that you're uh, in a group that's going to encourage you and they're going to sow into your life and you can pray for each other. And and if you are going through a moment of tiredness or or, or a challenge in your life, you can have people coming around you, uh, speaking the, the, the Word of God over your life and praying together. I want to encourage you, don't disconnect. Uh, if, if really what you need to do is connect and, and stay recharged. Other great ways we can recharge is obviously journaling, just getting alone with God for five minutes and, and letting Him speak to us through His Word. Another way is just praying, hey, simple prayer. We believe in that in our church, just reconnecting with Jesus all throughout the day. Uh, there's so many great ways that we can recharge, but I want to really encourage you, don't give up, don't quit when God has called you to something amazing. Let's just learn how to recharge. The second thing that we see from this story, uh, if you're feeling tired right now, I want to encourage you to step into God's presence. You see, Elijah goes on and after this big 40 day, uh, you know, marathon, uh, what would you expect after that? You're going to be tired again. And so he goes into a cave to spend the night. You know, I'm imagining this dark cave and it almost gives you this kind of depressing feeling. And it says, the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? 
He replied, and this sounds pretty down, he says, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Sounds like a bit of an exaggeration, but that's sometimes what tiredness can do. Makes it feel like we're the only one who's sacrificing. Verse 11, I love what God says to him. He doesn't challenge him, doesn't rebuke him, but he just simply says, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. God calls Elijah out from the cave and to stand simply in his presence. Out from the, dep- the thoughts of depression, the thoughts of suicide, out from the tiredness, the exhaustion or whatever else and into his presence, his goodness, his love, his joy, his peace that transcends all understanding. You see, God just wants us to stand in his presence. And I believe that no matter what you're going through right now, I want to invite you just like Elijah to come into and stand in the presence of God. You see, after, after this moment, Elijah actually goes on to make history time and time again. You see, he, he, he ends up actually being one of the only uh, people who, who doesn't experience death. In fact, God just, just takes him straight to heaven. I mean, he has one of the coolest uh, finishes of anyone in the Bible. And just because you've been, had a moment that's in the cave doesn't mean that you can't absolutely finish so strong, uh, more crazy more amazing than you could have ever imagined, but it just comes from getting recharged from standing in the presence of God. And we, we even know from Elijah's story that he goes on and he appoints, uh, God calls him to appoint the next generation of leaders. I mean, God uses him powerfully. And I, I just know that when we stand in the presence of God, he moves in our life and it leads to great things. And I can think of a great story um, of that practically in our church. Uh, her name is Christine. Um, Christine is uh, one of our Bible Connect group leaders. She's also a dream team leader and just an amazing, faithful girl in the church. And she's recently uh, been through uh, a difficult situation professionally. Uh, In her job, she found herself um, in a role that she wasn't really being adequately trained for. And if you've ever had one of those kind of jobs where you just feel like things are a little bit over your head and you're not well supported, it's tough. Um, And so she was struggling in that capacity, but also, uh, you know, office politics, right? If there's anything that'll tire you out when you go to work, it's office politics. And so she was really just unsatisfied in that role. And she was praying to God about it, I think considering quitting. But then she felt that through her journaling, God encouraged her just to stick with the role a little bit longer. So she decided not to quit, but to stick with it. And uh, actually she got transferred to a d- different department in her company. And in that new uh, in that new department, she learned all these uh, new amazing skills and was exposed to all this, these other different aspects of, of, of the business and things that are really gonna add to her uh, professional kind of abilities and, and her future career. So that was really great and obviously the right decision to stay in the role. However, what happened was because of COVID, they made sweeping cuts to the company and a, a number of people lost their jobs, including Christine. And that's pretty tough, you know, when, when you're in this kind of climate and now you have to look for a new job and, 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 and that's even made harder because of the global situation. But you know what, when you look at Christine, you would never know the challenge that she's facing just from looking at her from the surface. We Here in Hong Kong, we're, we're pretty blessed right now. We can do, do church physically um, with some level of restrictions. Um, and so I, we see Christine come into church every week and just see her quickly stepping into the presence of God during praise and worship. You know, as soon as that first song starts, and uh, you can just see the joy of God on her. She's there's no complicatedness about it. You know, there's no there's no difficulty in coming into God's presence. It's just simply ah yes, Jesus. And I want to invite you to have that moment with Him, and you can have that 
any moment. Uh, you can have that at any time. You don't have to be at a physical church service. You can have that right now online. You can have that in your connect group. You can have that when you journal. You can have that as you pray and as you worship in your private time. But God's presence will refresh you. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus says that he encourages everyone in Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. See, that's the message of the cross, is that we can come to Jesus and because He died and rose again, we can be forgiven. We can experience His goodness. We can experience His amazing plan for our lives. And you can also experience the power of the Holy Spirit, that supernatural love, that supernatural presence of God to come into your life and recharge you. And I believe God wants to recharge you right now. So I want to pray over a couple groups of people um, as we just all stand in the presence of God together. So I want to pray firstly for, for people who are feeling a bit tired right now. You, you know, These amazing people, but just feeling a little bit flat. Let's pray. Lord, we just invite you. I invite you right now to come and to just to touch people's hearts, just to refresh them, Lord, to re-energize, uh, to clarify their vision, Lord, uh, as they stand in your presence, God, that, that you would refresh their hearts. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to know uh, all the answers of uh, how to get out of our situation or how to face the certain problems we're facing. Uh, we know that you can provide wisdom, but even when we don't understand what's going on, we know that we can stand in your presence and that you're leading us somewhere good. So I pray that you bless them. I pray that they would be comforted by the Holy Spirit, knowing that you're with them as they go through the season and that there are amazing things to come. There is an, uh, there, that your good plans have not changed for their life. And we thank you for what's ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. And I hope you're encouraged by that. I also want to pray for one other group of people and maybe you're listening to this message and you're not personally connected to Jesus. You don't personally know this amazing God of rest who says, come to me. And right now, I believe He's calling some of you to Him uh, and you're feeling that in your heart right now. And so if you want to give your life to Jesus or if you want to come back to Jesus, why don't you say this prayer with us right now? We'll put it up on the screen. Why don't you read this out and let's invite Jesus into our life right now. Here we go. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Amen. Awesome. Well, if you just prayed that prayer, I am so pumped for your relationship with Jesus. The Bible says that all of heaven is celebrating with you right now and also all of Lifehouse as well. And we want to help you to grow in your relationship with Jesus. So make sure you get connected. Do the Grow course if you haven't done that already. And uh, come on, get in community here at Lifehouse Church. Well, it's been a pleasure sharing the Word of God with you today. I'm so pumped. Come on, let's get re-energized, full, uh, full of the love of God, standing in His presence, and let's go out and take on the world. All right, God bless Lifehouse. See ya.